In this video, I will show you how to perform parity during the corner permutation step of square one um, using the Vandenberg method. So normally what people do when they get serious about solving square one is they learn standard uh, corner permutation algorithms and then they learn all of the EP algorithms, which is all the cases with parity and without parity. Um, but if you do parity while you are doing corner permutation, uh, you can save yourself from learning half of the EP algorithms just by learning uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 uh, corner permutation algorithms. Um, so it's, and those, that half of the EP is the worst half too. Uh, some of them really suck. Um, so this is very good. Um, it, hmm. uh, the algorithms are much shorter than the edge permutation algorithms of parity. Um, so it's a very worthwhile thing to learn if you're going to get serious about doing square one. So I'm going to teach you how to recognize these algorithms using the standard uh, adjacent swap parity, which is just a J perm. Um, so you're going to recognize both layers like 3 by 3 PLL uh, at the same time. Um, if you have a case like this where they're both standard 3 by 3 PLLs, in this case a J perm, um, and uh, PLL, PLL cases that can be solved on the 3 by 3 and not impossible parity cases, which do not show up on 3x3, three three. Oh, okay. um, you can just do a standard um, a standard algorithm for the corner permutation parity. In this case, it's the J perm, so it's like that. Um, also, um, so the same thing here, we see that on the top we have a J perm, uh, so you know we have an adjacent swap. And on the bottom, we have a G perm, um, so this does show up in 3x3, three three, even though they're not the same. You can recognize them both like like that. Um, so the thing you do is you recognize what corner permutation you have, whether you have an adjacent or an opposite or no swap on which layer. Then you also recognize whether it's a standard 3x3 three three PLL algorithm. Um, in this case, they both are. Um, if, they, if neither of them were, then this would al also work because the parity matches up on both layers. Um, but if you had one that is a standard PLL algorithm possible on 3x3, three three, and the other one is not, then you would have parity. Um, but if both of them look like there is parity, then it doesn't actually have parity. An example of that would be this, where you see we have um, this case on top that is not a standard 3x3 PLL. In this case on bottom, which also is not a standard 3x3 PLL. Um, instead of thinking, oh hey, these are both non-standard, so we have parity. Uh, no, if they if the parity matches, then you don't have parity. Um, so see if we do that, then we just have an opposite and adjacent swap, swap, flip, swap, swap. I don't know. So that's how you recognize CP parity. Um, I could go through other alg algorithms and show you how I perform them, but I do Polish style turning, which is unlike what most of you probably do. Um, so it won't do much good and it'll just be a waste of video. So I will just put the algorithms in the description and these algorithms are from the speed solving post by Andrew Nelson, um, who is the current North American record holder for both square one, single, and average. Um, so uh, thank you, Andrew, for these algorithms. Um, yeah, so those are down in the description. So uh, hopefully, hopefully this video helped you uh, understand why you should learn CP parity and how to recognize it. Um, if you have any questions at all about this or about execution or CP parity or anything related to square one or anything at all, um, just leave those in the description or send me a personal message. Um, so thank you for watching.